So I'm feeling a little guilty. I didn't get to talk about energy and the storage of energy and capacitors. So I'm trying to make up for it. I'm trying to apologize for it. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of slides that describe the energy that's stored in capacitors and relate the energy and capacitors to the charge and the voltage that's applied to the plates of the capacitors. So here's a little bit of background. In this slide, we've connected a battery downstairs here to a capacitor upstairs here through a switch with some wires. And let's imagine we start with the switch open. And so the, um, the circuit is not activated. And then we're going to close the switch and we're going to activate the circuit. When we do that, electrons will flow through this wire on the right hand side and accumulate on the plate of the capacitor on the right. And also electrons will flow off the plate and the capacitor on the right through the wire through the wire on the left and return to the battery. And in that way the capacitor will become charged with positive and negative plates and uh, current will have flowed, the charge will have flowed through the battery. We can view all that from a perspective of energy and the flow of energy. When we charge up the capacitor, the electrical potential energy between the plates of the capacitor grows and we acquire electrical potential energy in that region between the plates. It is stored in the electrical field. That energy that is now stored in the capacitor in the electrical field in the capacitor came from the battery. The battery supplied that energy in the form of chemical energy uh, by, by breaking or making chemical bonds. And so we can think of this charging up of the capacitor from the perspective of charges flowing through a circuit, current flowing through a circuit, or we can think of it from the perspective of the flow of energy, energy uh, flowing from the battery, uh, from the form of chemical energy to the capacitor in the form of electrical energy. This slide shows you three versions of the equation that describes the potential energy in a capacitor. In terms of the capacitance of the capacitor, the charge on the plates of the capacitor, and the voltage across the plates of the capacitor. So over here on the far left, that's the electrical potential energy. And then the three expressions, equations, are three ways of writing the potential energy stored by the capacitor. So this first way of writing it, one half Q squared over C, that's writing the uh, potential energy in terms of the capacitance of the capacitor and the charge we put on the plates of the capacitor. The second way of writing it, that's half CV squared. That's writing the potential energy of the capacity of the electrical field in the capacitor, writing it in terms of the capacitance of the capacitor and the uh, voltage across the capacitor. And then finally, this third way of writing the energy stored in the capacitor is is writing it solely in terms of the charge you put on the plates and the, um, the voltage between the plates with no reference to the, the capacitance of the capacitor. So, you know, there are three quantities that are being used there, C, Q, and V, and we can write the potential energy 
in terms of any two of those uh, quantities. The, the three equations are related through that master capacitor equation that um, C equals Q over V. These equations or this equation applies to all capacitors, no matter the capacitors. It applies to all geometries of capacitors, no matter the geometry. It tells you a few interesting things. Most importantly, perhaps, it tells you that if you have a capacitor with a large capacitor, and let's look at this first version of the equation. It's easy to store the charge. With a large capacitance as sitting in the denominator, when you apply the charge to the plates of the capacitor, the energy cost, the stored potential energy is gonna be small. On the other hand, storing charge on the plates of a capacitor with a small capacitance, that's gonna be hard. Again, look at this equation. When you store charge on the plates of the capacitor, if the capacitance is small, then the potential energy is going to be large. It's going to cost you a lot of energy. So there's a lot of information in those three versions of the potential energy equation. You know, sometimes you use one, sometimes you use another because you, you know this or that quantity. As an example of the equations for the energy and the capacitance, I just want to look at one quick example. What I'm imagining here on this slide is that I've got a battery, 40 volts, and I got three capacitors. And they're all the same capacitances of the capacitors. So they're all, I'm just going to call them all C. And I'm going to see how much, what is the most energy I can store with those capacitors? What is the least energy I can store with those capacitors when I connect them across the 40 volt battery? So let's start upstairs here. This is where I've arranged the capacitors in series. And as you recall, if you got capacitors in series, you make a smaller capacitance. If you've got three equal capacitors in series, you're going to make a three times smaller capacitance. Now, in this example, I said that the individual capacitors had 8.4 microfarads of capacitance. The smaller capacitor that we just built by chaining three of them together is going to be one third of that. It's 2.8 millifarads. So that's the capacitance of this arrangement. The energy, the potential energy stored in that capacitor, we can write it as one half times the equivalent capacitance times the square of the voltage across the capacitance. That's the 40 volts, and that equivalent capacitance is the 2.8 millifarads. And I'm using this equation because it's C and V I know. If I calculate by plugging in the capacitance and plugging in the voltage, the energy that's stored, I got 2.2 joules. So that's the arrangement that had the smallest capacitance. It therefore has the smallest, has the smallest energy stored. Now let's look at the second arrangement. Again, it's the same building blocks, the three capacitors and the battery. This time I'm going to arrange the capacitors in parallel. These three capacitors are now in parallel. That's the way to build a bigger capacitance. And if you've got three equal capacitors and you put them in parallel, you, you build a capacitance that's three times bigger than the individual capacitors. So again, if I um, start with a 8.5 millifarad capacitor, and I arrange three of them in parallel, I'm gonna get an equivalent capacitance of three times that, 25 millifarads. I can then figure out the energy that's stored when that's hooked up across a 40 volt battery using this same equation, uh, equation again for the, for the potential energies, one half 
times the equivalent capacitance times the square root of the voltage. If I plug in this equivalent capacitance and um, the voltage of my battery, this time I get 20 joules, over 20 joules. So you'll notice here that I made, I assembled two different arrangements of the three capacitors. One in which I made the capacitance as small as possible, the other in which I made it as large as possible. When I hooked this smaller one up to the battery, it stored less energy. When I hooked the larger capacitor up to the battery, it stored more energy. 